please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Hello everyone, welcome to the exhibition of stupid people. Today we're going to start with Sydney Watson. Over on X, Sydney had tweeted, So it's been brought to my attention that Pearl Davis thinks it's acceptable to rip an entire video of mine, cut it up and post it to her own YouTube channel unedited and without credit. I spent two weeks researching, writing and editing almost an hour long piece of content about Ruby Frank. Pearl took that cut it up, slapped her watermark on my face, and didn't even have the decency to tag or credit me anywhere. In my entire time making content, I've never done this, but I have filed DMCA claims against all of those videos in which she wholesale stole my content. Not only do I find Pearl's rhetoric absolutely disgusting, but I'll be damned if I let her use my face to push her revolting ideas. Not only that, but I'm not going to let someone steal hours of my original content for them to profit off. Pearl, if you're going to try and sustain whatever is left of your career, you should probably learn to make your own content instead of stealing the hard work of other creators. Included is an image showing Sydney Watson's content in the shorts section of Just Pearly Things YouTube channel. Pearl's channel at present is going through a steady decline in viewership. Understandably so, because all she does is essentially crap on women for not being whammonly enough, which looks like a massive deflection because she is the very thing she likes to crap on. So I guess it could be argued also content-wise to be a form of self-deprecation. Pearl had replied directly to Sydney by saying, I had no intention of ripping off your work. Why the quotations, since it is what you did? I reacted to it in a live stream and told people to go to your channel to watch the full thing. I did credit you. We have our guy pull clips from the live stream the next day automatically. I do not pull these clips myself. I wish you would have, 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 have been resolved via a quick message, and we would have had no problem taking it down. I do apologize if this came off as ripping off your work as it was not my intention. Somebody had to point out something of interest though. Originally, apparently, you put, our clipper is a guy in Nigeria who pulls clips sometimes and doesn't understand how copyright works at times. To which another Twitter user posted a picture of the Osandero brothers. They are the two that helped stage the fake attack against Jussie Smallbits. While you, Pearl, try to justify you using those clips, citing them as being derived from your stream, therefore, that's okay, the point still stands you did not credit at all. I don't like the DMCA system at the best of times and I certainly don't make it a point to use it, but you have been proven to have taken content from somebody and while you may have used it in a live stream, those clips you used came straight from her video. Your reaction doesn't add anything transformative to it, does it fall under fair use? The answer is more than likely no. Some replies to Sydney of interest. Riley, would you debate Pearl if the opportunity was given to you? That had already been attempted, she backed out, cited an imaginary trip that she never took, and could have just handled it in private. Now I agree with Sydney here, blatant content theft by repeat offenders is now a public issue. That is very true. Pearl has a track record of using people's content for her own gain. And I don't mean in the sense of adding anything transformative, I mean in the sense of just using it. A channel that can be considered a mirror. We as creators have to hold ourselves to a certain standard. That standard has to be upheld across the board. If you are going to use someone's content and not properly credit them, or get permission to use that content in the manner that Pearl did, then you are well within your right, the creator whose content has been misused, to flag them, to strike them, to DMCA them. We don't like flaggers in the online space that much. We really don't. Pearl might be one of the universal exceptions to that at this point. And for somebody with close to 2 million subscribers, your channel is struggling because of the hole you have dug, and your channel is struggling because no one is interested in buying the message you used to peddle, not least because you are not the right avatar to push that message. I highly recommend for you, Pearl, that you look up what fair use is. If you're going to use someone's content, at least have the common decency to link it or tag them since we can't put links in comments 
of shorts anymore. So next, UCLA medical school students are forced to attend a lecture who in this lecture decided to blast modern medicine as white science, which on the face of it seems a tad contradictory to what they are there for. They also suggested that these individuals, these first year students, need to pray to Mama Earth instead. I don't believe in this um, praying to the Earth crap, you know, nature will help you. No, 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 give me some Panadol for the headache. And of course, if it is something vastly more serious, a guillotine. Lisa Gray Garcia gave a two hour lecture entitled Housing Injustice in LA, Addressing Unhousing and Practicing Solidarity at the Medical School's Geffen Hall. A complaint was received and it was filed by the university's Jewish Faculty Resilience Group. The reason why is because Lisa Gray Garcia is a supporter of Hamas. During her speech, she covered her face with a kefia or a Palestinian scarf as she spoke about homelessness and compared the homelessness to the situation in the Gaza Strip. The students were also instructed to touch the floor with their fists while Gray Garcia made a non-secular prayer to Mama Earth and our ancestors. Quote, Mama Earth was never meant to be bought, sold, pimped or played. She claimed that private property and scarcity are capitalist lies that unalived people of different races. While she also complained about the efforts to clean homeless encampments, quote, not only are our bodies considered unclean in public, not only are our lives criminalized for being outside without a roof, but politicians use us for their campaigns, which is true. Biden recently seen sitting with African Americans eating fried chicken, Trump walked into a Chick-fil-A with a bunch of African Americans. Shocker, I know. People play politics and optics. Ray Garcia went on to note that California spent $30 million on the removal of our houseless bodies and asked students to think about how many homes could be built with that money, even in these inflated ridiculous prices of commodified Mama Earth. I would argue it is a very different situation for how far the money could go in California to how far that money could go in a much cheaper state. I would always suggest to address the issue Dealing with the issue in California, considering how expensive it already is, will always remain an uphill battle because of how bad the situation is there. Sometimes, and rather unfortunately, it is better to move those people to another state where they have a better chance, something which many of them are denied and deprived. We have something similar in the United Kingdom with those who live in London who can no longer afford to live there. So they are often given properties or ordered or recommended properties in other towns far away. Of course, if you have friends or family in London, you want to stay there. But as we now know, you have to have the ability to live there. Simply being born there is not enough. At one point during the lecture, Gray Garcia is said to have called modern medicine white science and said they were in what the settlers call LA. In other instances, the advocate for the homelessness led students in chants of free, free Palestine. And when one student refused to stand during a second pagan prayer, an unidentified UCLA faculty member asked for the pupils' names, which could lead to repercussions. It is a dangerous area to traverse to first of all order these people into that room and force them to be a part of what can be considered cult-like behavior. A free mind must be exactly that. They are there to though be students of the medical variety. They are not there to be lectured on history, which in this instance can be historical revisionism. And it really is that. A lot of it is also gray area concerning Palestine and Israel, an issue that is not going anywhere anytime soon. And it does get vastly more complicated when some like to assign blame rather than seek solution. When the reality is concerning that especially, there is no solution right now. There really isn't. As far as this speech goes, this makes UCLA look like absolute trash. But this absolute trash is, as time passes, being slowly but surely undone by those who speak on its behalf. It is also being done as more of the newer generation are looking at this and saying, this is not, this is not appropriate, this is not accurate, this is not honest. This is ideological warfare, using buzzwords and ad homs to try and drill home points and forcing people into things they don't want to be or want to believe. The Jewish Faculty Resilience Group were right to file a complaint, but UCLA are unlikely to do anything about it because they're cowards. Before we get to the final subject, I'm going to throw in an honorable mention to a video that was sent my way a few times, but is three weeks old. 
so I don't really want to give it too much of our time today. It concerns a YouTuber who is having a child who decided to give it upset and antsy and rageful because their OBGYN talked about them being plus size. They dubbed them fat phobic. So congrats to the video with no audio you see on the screen, Alexandra Rodriguez, for not understanding that at your size, there are issues and there will be more likely complications because of your size concerning pregnancy. If you want to use fancy little words like fat phobic and ironic turn of phrase there, I promise you, you are not really paying attention to the reality that comes with being larger, health problems that can arise, health complications that can in fact impact your child as well. Do not try to be a science denier selectively when it suits you, okay? Your choices can impact your children. Simples. To the final subject, we're going to go to something that kind of confuses me, but reminds me of a teacher, I think in Canada, who I think was doing it as a protest, but I'm not sure if this one is the case. We go to Stephanie Muller, or Mueller, I can never remember the pronunciation, who is one of Washington State's only openly transgender trial attorneys. She uses this position to bring diversity to the practice of law. Despite her outlandish appearance, which we'll get to in a moment, Stephanie says she has been treated with complete respect and great acceptance since her transition in 2012. Stephanie is 70 years old. At the age of 70, we all want to be a bit more relaxed, I'm sure. Age gracefully, right? Not in Stephanie's case. No, in Stephanie's case, it's very much this. Now, by all means, judge away if you want. We're not going to do that. We're going to read some article parts that I think are relevant, though. Pictures are doing their rounds on Twitter because of a Seattle journalist, Jonathan Ko, Ko Cho, C-H-O-E, who is in court to cover a case of Iris Boardman, a left-wing protester charged with disrupting a Seattle council meeting. As far as performance in court goes, Stephanie was a professional, but obviously that's not what caught everyone's eye. Something Stephanie had once said, a quote, that I think is quite important. I get good results because I'm a good lawyer. My gender is beside the point. This is very, very fabulous. I don't have the accent to say it in the right way I know. Outside of court, when challenged by the journalist about the evidence stacking up against her client, Stephanie simply said, she's innocent, of course. My client has pled not guilty and she is not guilty. How about that? Images of Stephanie were going around quite heavily on TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, and of course, one can certainly poke at the pokies if you like, or the outlandish appearance of somebody who's 70 and you'd expect, because of societal norms, to be a bit differently presented. My view is, I don't particularly care how you look in a courtroom, as long as you do your job properly and you're not breaking any of the etiquette rules. I find it somewhat amusing that transitioning four years ago, so at the age of 66, yes, at the age of 66, quite late to the game, and going so far to try and look like somebody who wouldn't be out of place on a street corner or out of place in one very obvious decade. Do let me know what you think in the comments, guys, about everything we cover, of course, today. As a final thing, last night I did a whiskey stream on Moisky Live with my dear darling friend David. We were also joined by my dad, so for three hours, if you're interested in listening to it, you will hear three very English people talking over each other and joking like absolute idiots while my audience stand my father, something which I will ban every last one of them for. If you want to go listen to it, it'll be linked in the pinned comment. Have a lovely day, everyone.